Hi, my name is Richard Dix, and this is How Did That Happen? A podcast where I look at everyday things or events and try to figure out how they came to be. Every week I will research one topic, and by the end of the episode, I hope to truly have the answer to the question, how did that happen? I just wanted to talk to you guys before the episode starts, uh, like I have grown accustomed to do in these last couple episodes, and let you know where I stand with um, Shmanda Excess, uh, if anybody was tuning in last week. Have not been back yet. The Shmanda Excess have actually switched over my eating habits to uh, a different area of the world. I've been eating at a lot of European joints recently, a lot of Irish places and um, British places. Ate at a place, was it last night, called the Penny Lane Pub. Um, what did I have, you ask? I had fish and chips and some Irish uh, cheese fries, which are just cheese fries that you have in a European place, basically. But, yeah, that's a little little bit of extra if you're wondering about how I um how I'm doing with the food poisoning? I have fully recovered and I'm back out here just letting my stomach just go raw dog and all this different food out here. Um, but that is that's me. So we're gonna go ahead and go into the episode now. Hello and welcome to another episode of How Did That Happen? This week we are discussing bottled water, and I find out that some bottled water is just tap water rebranded. Looking at you, Aquafina, come along for the ride this week as I ask bottled water. How did that happen? So I wanted to start off by defining what bottled water is, or at least what the FDA, uh, read you a small definition of what the FDA defines as bottled water, and it is water that is intended for human consumption and sealed in bottles or other containers with no added ingredients, except that it may contain a safe and suitable antimicrobial agent. Spring water, um, spring water as defined by the FDA, spring water is defined is derived from an underground formation from which water flows naturally to the surface of the earth at an, identif- at an, at an, at an identified location. I don't know why that was so hard. So and I, I learned a lot about um, water. I really did in this. And I, I mean, I honestly went into this thinking that I knew, you know, a little bit because I'm already a guy who like, you know, I do, I do spring water, not, not purified water because I like, I saw some documentary on Netflix or whatever. Definitely, like, I think with like most episodes, it just, Takes me to a whole nother level with the things uh, that I know about these. All right, yeah. So, I mean, I figure I'm just going to keep giving you these definitions. And then if you want to skip past it, that's fine. But I figure it'll help just because, I don't know, once I started looking at it, I I realized there was just so many different types of water. And most people probably don't know all of these waters. I don't know. But um, so artesian, there's our artesian well water, um, which is this water. And I just watched this crazy video about it. Um, like it's not crazy, but it was it was crazy. The concept of it is is, is pretty crazy. Um, the artesian well water, yeah, it's so it's water that comes from the ground, but it's not like a regular well where it's just like put like, it's just water that's it's hard to explain. It's basically water. It's water under pressure. So it's water like like through that's been they sitting around a bunch of like rocks or it's a very porous um rock with a lot of holes in it that that water is able to get into, and then they they tap something into that in that down in, in, into the ground, and then that from the pressure. It just opens up, you know, boom, and then you have like water that comes out like pretty fast. Basically, like a, a simple way to explain it. The guy in the video, who's like a park ranger, he explained it like a Capri Sun, which is probably even easier. Basically, he was like the water inside, you know, is like the the aquifer, and then like there's like the the the, the Capri Sun itself is like the stones on the outside, and then you you know bash the yellow thing in there, which is like your your pipe to get down into the actual artesian well, and then um, boom, you have water. And then, and then there's mineral water. This water comes from an underground source and contains at least 250 parts per million total dissolved solids. Uh, minerals and trace elements must come from the source of the underground water. They cannot be added later. So this is just like giving you a different idea of like when you see different waters in the store because there, there's a lot of different types of waters. So the actual story, the actual story of water, uh, excuse me, not the story of water. That's a long story. Uh, the story of bottled water, like most things, um, to me, like most things to me, start with the Romans um, when they made aqueducts, which is basically they, you know, they piped in water that they needed uh, and sent it to certain places for convenience, which is something that many people didn't have before then. You know, they were, they were able to bring water from one source and put it to, you know, bring it to where they needed, which I thought was, was pretty important. And then in 1622, which is like way later, I just thought, I thought I wanted to start there because that's what I think when it when it really showed people that you could have um, water, kind of water on call. I guess is 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 why I put that in there first. I don't want to just jump 
a thousand years because which, which 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 I'm about to do. But it's like because there's a lot of stuff that happens then. But, but then but before then, I feel like people were always going to the water source. To me, that was one of the first instances in human history where people were bringing the water source to them, which is essentially what bottled water is. Like have, if, if you have a bottled water right there beside you, you brought that water source to you. And I feel like that that technology, so to speak, to me, kind of began with the Romans. So to set that to say, I'm gonna jump ahead. Uh, to the year 1622, when the Holy Well bottling plant in the UK uh, started, because that's the first bottled water plant in the world. Um, and this practice spread to other places in Europe, um, all of them using natural springs at the time. The first use of these bottles um, was medicinal. They were thought to have therapeutic as well as physical healing benefits, and the emergence of bottled water can be traced back to spa culture during the 16 and 1700s. They would go to the natural springs as well as the spas and indulge in something called water therapy, which I, I yeah. This uh, continued on into the 1800s, and this led to it becoming a part of the lexicon among people. You know, bottled water. You go to the spa, and you're like, well, what do they have? They have bottled water. And you're like, what? Well, pass it on. Um, in 1767, the first commercially available bottled water was invented and sold by Jackson Spa in Boston, Massachusetts. The belief that the minerals in the spring water was a basic cure-all led to imitations coming on to the market like pretty much right after that with most, um, like most things. Like I said, I mean, the, the, the best what, uh, a form of flattery is what, copying somebody? I don't know, I probably made that up. But like the first, the first carbonated water was created in Geneva, Switzerland in 1783 by Johann Jacob Schwepp, um, originally a watchmaker and jeweler. He didn't create the science, but he copied it from a man named Joseph Priestley. And it's not to say that he copied I mean, he definitely copied them. But, like, basically, at that time, a lot of people were, like, messing around with it. And he just was, like, saw what he was doing and was like, I want to do that. And then he did it a little bit better. Um, who was credited? He, the, guy, the, the guy, Joseph uh, Priestley, he's credited with creating the process of infusing water with carbon dioxide. So he's, like, the father of it, like, of the process. But, like, then, like, Schweppes is the father of, like, carbonated water, which is... So I don't know, it's like a stepdad or something. I don't know. He explained his findings in a paper that he called, and this is still Joseph Priestley we're talking about, not Johann Schwepp, just to keep it, keep it clear. Uh, Priestley, he described his findings in a paper called um, Impregnating Water with Fixed Air. I just thought that was a cool title. That's why I included that. Impregnating Water with Fixed Air. Okay, so back to Schwepp's. He tried his carbonated water out that he had created in London, but it didn't sell. And later we will talk about a couple other failed uh, water campaigns, a uh, couple, uh, one specifically in the UK. Um, uh, some, some imitations will be uh, created, like I said, and they were, they were say that the carbonation, because like the original bottled water was not carbonated, right? It was just regular. But the imitation bottled water like that was basically imitating the, the health benefits um, that bottled water was then said to have had. It was, it was said that the carbonation helped bring out all the minerals in the water. So it's like, oh, yeah, this is that, this is that busy stuff. You know, so it's, it's, it's like bringing out that extra good, you know. Like people are ridiculous, but they will believe basically anything uh, at some point. The, the, the first patent for imitation mineral water was filed by Joseph Hawkins in 1809. One of the first big manufacturers of bottled water in America was a company by the name of Poland Springs, which they weren't a company at first, when they, of course, when they first started, but they started as a small inn. Um, they had a spring on the property, and then they had, they always drank from that stream, or excuse excuse me, the, the the spring. But one of their family members had been suffering from a disease called dyspepsia, um, and they began uh, he began drinking from that stream exclusively, and evidently it cured him. And so word got out about that. People thought that was really cool. Wanted to swing by and check out that spring. Um, family began to market their inn as a place that had water with special health benefits in 1844. And that began to get the name out about Poland Springs. And from there, they started bottling and selling that water. They still operate today, although they don't use the same spring that cured the guy's uh, dyspepsia. And they tell you that on the website, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but it's still, it still runs, though, and you can see it if you go to the property, which is now, I guess, on my bucket list. Uh, another thing that led to the spread of bottled water was the technological innovations. Um, that have like cheaper glass and quicker bottling. So this all comes like a perfect storm when that guy gets his dyspepsia cured and they're like, man, we can start making this bottle of water fast and everyone wants to come over and hang out um, and drink all this bottled water. 
in, in addition to the perceived health benefits coming from places like Poland Springs, it was it was believed that bottled water was safer um, than many municipal water supplies, and they were afraid of the spread of disease. And so that's that's that that's essentially how water happened. That's not like the end of of this of this segment, but I'm just saying like. You could, I could obviously just get deeper and just go into all these different companies that kind of made it over the next like 150 years. But that's like I've said multiple times when I try to really kind of explain the direction of where I'm trying to go with this podcast. That's, that's not really what this is about. Um, it's really just about how did we go from, you know, people just drinking it from, because I looked that up as well. Like how did people do water before bottled water? How did humans, you know, get their water? That's how I kind of, kind of, kind of started off with the, with the Romans. Um, and, and, and even before I looked at that, you know, the cavemen, they said they would boil it in like you know, like skin bags or like, you know, like, like hide bags and stuff like stuff like that. And, and so it's, it, it's, it's always been interesting to me, like, you know, how people get their water. And this is, it's not, the rest of it is not that interesting to me. So yeah, I mean, as far as like for this podcast, but so what I will get into though, is the idea of bottled water versus, versus tap water, which is like this whole war in itself. And I will honestly say when I was doing the research, um, and you never know what you're going to find when you start searching this stuff up. You really don't. Cause I don't, I don't look most of this stuff up beforehand. That's why I'm doing it. I don't know anything about this stuff. Um, I mean, I, I, I do all my research. I'm the only person, you know, working on this podcast. So, you know what I mean? I'm finding all, all this new stuff all the time. Um, but you have to kind of fight through all of this, like bottled water is not, it's, 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 it's not spring water. It's tap water or whatever. And I mean, that's, and I found out that's most of that's true, but I didn't know that, but it's like, but it's like that's when I'm trying to find out the history of bottled water. All they're doing is telling you that bottled water sucks, basically. Um, and you have to like figure out. Like I had to look. I basically had to watch all of that and then find the right like the right stuff. Um, but I'll get into that now. Just a little bit of like um, Aquafina. I guess want to say is is I did not know. I did not know this. Um, is, is and this is not not part of the I did not know segment for the record. But it's it's not um, it's not it's not bottled anywhere from like anywhere natural. It's straight up tap water. I mean, it's, you know what I mean? It's, it's, they got the, you know, the mountains or whatever on the bottle and it's not, but it does say on the back, uh, P- PWS, which is a public water source, uh, basically means, you know, we got it from the same place that you can turn on your faucet and get it. But basically it's just purified and bottled tap water. Dizani does the same thing. Um, they say at least 25% of the bottled water on the market is just tap water. Due to me. So one in four companies out there are just selling you sink water interesting and then i watched this video um that was mentioning a, a specific time well, they said around in like the 70s um bottled water the people who were making um sodas were trying to make more money because they realized that their profits while they weren't going up they were basically just staying the same so they wanted to make more money and they were trying to figure out uh how to get people to you know drink how can i put this they, re- they realized that they couldn't get people to drink their product, their 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 of bottled water without slandering, you know, the tap water. So basically, that is a lot of I think how a lot of the bias, at least in the last couple generations, um, from from water has come into play from literally like just like product placement and, and like marketing and you know advertising and saying like you know you shouldn't. And I mean, there's just some real stories out there. I mean, I definitely have been around people and I've been places where it's like you should not drink their tap water, but it's like. A, a, Far and away, like from the research that I've done, is like most places have decent tap water, and I found that as well. It's like it's only if only if you're in a place where people are like, "Bro, don't do that." You know what I mean? Like, like you shouldn't. Then, then you know what I mean. But well, it's only been a couple places in my life. Granted, I mean, I, maybe I've not been that many places. But and that is how bottled water happened. And now it's time for the roundup. The roundup. The roundup. And we're gonna round it up. The Holy Well in Britain was the first site of bottled water in the world. Bottled water gains popularity due to the perceived health benefits of natural spring water. This led to bottled water becoming abundant at spas, and those spa waters began being sold in local stores. Better glass and machinery allowed for more bottles to be sold, and that coupled with the idea that municipal water sources were subpar created a market for water in bottles. Things I didn't know before And now I know them. Never heard of these things. What are they? Okay, yeah, I thought so. This this was interesting, and some and some people may know this. I had never um, seen this, but in, in 2006, that the Fiji Water Company ran a campaign 
um, that was based on the fact, just simply just based